Greetings, fellow adventurers, and welcome to the Couple of Nerds podcast. I'm D&D Wife, the creator of dndwifestories.com, and your co-host. Joining me is the man behind the screen, my brilliant dungeon master, and also my husband, Egile. Say hi, Egile. Hey, everyone. Excited to be here sharing our nerdy adventures with all of you. Absolutely. So what's Couple of Nerds all about? Well, we're diving into the realms of Extraeus, sharing our experiences, playing D&D in our apartment, and exploring the intricate tapestry of relationships both in and out of the game. And we got some exciting segments for you all. From lore deep dives to crafting tips, artwork showcases, and relationship advice on and off the table, we've got a little bit of everything for every kind of adventurer. So whether you're a seasoned adventurer or a tabletop newbie, we invite you to join us today. Tune in, relax, and enjoy the magic of Couple of Nerds. May your roles be natural 20s and your adventures be legendary. Welcome to the Couple of Nerds podcast, episode three, Apartment Craft, setting up your perfect gaming space. I'm D&D Wife, your co-host, and with me is Dungeon Master Egile. Hey, everyone. In episode three, we're going to be focusing on crafting the ideal tabletop gaming space in a small apartment, just because we know how difficult it can be to fit something like that into a small space. Oh, yeah. I mean, when we first started this Five years ago, we were in this tiny one-bedroom, one-bath apartment. I mean, it was small. I think it was like 700 square feet total. <laughs> if we were lucky. Yeah. And just fitting our own stuff was a hassle. Like, our own... It was difficult. And we had hardly anything because we were barely out of college. We just got married. Yeah, we had nothing. So, yeah. So, it, you know, we really knew that if we were going to do this, we were going to have to be organized. Yeah, it, it was going to take up some space. So we thought about the first big major hurdle of doing something like that in a small space. And so we had to identify exactly where the best space to hold something like that would be. And also how we could arrange our furniture or get furniture that could assist us in that. So we had to discuss those challenges as a couple. We had to figure that out in our home. Yeah. And and like when we first started, it was also that thing of like, how big of a table could we have, right? So mm-hmm. when we first started off, it was the Trinity. It was just three players, yeah. one DM, and that was already like, holy cow, this is a lot of people it's to fit people. in our tiny apartment. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we were sitting on the floor. Some of us were on a couch. Cramped it was, little spaces. Some people were higher, sitting higher. Some people were sitting lower. Mm-hmm. It just never was really comfortable. Yeah, and there were issues with visibility too because of that height dynamic. Yeah, and, and you know, Typically, you know, most of us start with the couch coffee table set up because that's kind of the most efficient. We already have it set up. It's a killer on the neck, though, as you're kind of always looking down and it it does get uncomfortable over time because of the angle differences. Yeah, sitting on a couch, you don't really have that like back support. And so you're constantly leaning forward and it hurts after a while, especially if you're looking to play for a good few hours. Right. And then we tried to upgrade to more of like a little tiny dining table, but it wasn't balanced. So we'd have to like stick cardboard underneath it because if someone leaned too hard it would shove all our paper and everything off the table Mm -hmm. i remember we had to switch and move our small coffee table into the kitchen and move the dining table room into the living room once we realized that was the only space we could fit dnd oh yeah you get really good at apartment jenga yes like moving things around and basically changing your entire living room so that you can fit four grown adults i know and and as small as that sounds of a number it is quite quite a challenge to do that in a very small apartment plus we also had that fun of being an upstairs apartment and yeah. that when you get all these people you're always so worried that your screaming and yelling is going to you know disturb the downstairs neighbors that was always a, a a troubling issue for us we didn't want to cause any problems especially you know sometimes we get a little excited with our natural 20s and we go woo, and we start screaming <laughs> and the, it just we didn't want to become a nuisance I mean, who doesn't want to celebrate a natural 20 everybody nobody well, can say no to that you, you'll find out we do have someone at our table currently that hates absolutely <laughs> hates rolling natural 20s right now that is true um so they are having a little different experience but <laughs> in that regards when we did see our table grow physically and spiritually with people it, it really didn't make it any easier it definitely just kind of added more complexity to organizing six people at a table yeah we moved into a, <laughs> a bigger apartment only to increase the size of our table so Why it just not? came with similar issues as to I the mean, smaller apartment more travelers more adventures absolutely I, you know I, you can have a small amount of players but i feel you know with having six it allows for a lot more crazy dynamics oh yeah we can all split off do other things but it still presented an issue of how we were going to fit this many people into our slightly bigger apartment now. And, and we found the key was elevation. 
yes. was taking something as simple as ten dollar uh, bed risers mm -hmm. and lifting our table up about half a foot to a foot above everything changed the whole game plan. Oh yeah, it, it made a complete difference in how we placed our items and also how we could view the map. Yeah, and it created this space underneath the table that's like this void space where the players could put their belongings, their drinks, uh, so we didn't have any dreaded knockovers that would fill on, well, that would fall on top of painted minis or pre-made maps. Yes, and our table isn't necessarily comprised of the most agile people, so sometimes we do have issues with somebody knocking something over. Uh, we had a friend uh, whose constant uh, issue was knocking drinks over, knocking food <laughs> over, and so that would cause issues with the paper getting ruined especially when we were dealing with paper maps and things like that oh yeah and and really it was just a matter of just taking a sheet of plywood mm -hmm. putting it on top of these risers and it literally created an entirely new space for us it was amazing and in terms of the map it also created a less strain on us so we moved we moved also from the couch to an actual table yeah yeah so that helped because the chairs gave us a little bit more back strength which was really nice um but also the way we could see the map we didn't have to strain to look a uh, down on it or to look across the table from it we can see right through the map we can see right through the streets it's really cool yeah and and really it just shows that versatility because at first and we'll show you guys as you look into our discord you'll be able to see all these background pictures of our mm -hmm. original table setups and kind of see through photos of the transitions that we're talking about but what started as just a simple piece of unpainted plywood it really becomes a canvas for anything and mm -hmm. i'm currently working on a project uh to create this new super table that I've been hoping <laughs> with and we'll be releasing that soon. Uh, fortunately, it's it a little cold in California and when you're in an apartment, not having a garage makes it kind of hard to paint stuff. A little bit, yeah. And spray painting can be difficult too in a small apartment patio. Yeah, a little, a little tough, a little yeah. tough. But uh, we'll, we still will be posting all those pictures on our Discord, specifically the apartment craft section. And we'll also be posting, if anyone's interested, the links to some of those uh, unique items that helped us uh, better create a space for our players. Yeah, because basically we figured out that we needed a couple of solutions. We mm -hmm. needed a furniture solution, first of all. Like, yes. how could we not have to rearrange our busy lives already just to make the space somewhat comfortable? As well as also making sure that our players are comfortable while playing because nothing's worse than you're trying to be in this heartfelt moment as a chair scooches back as they try to slide to go get a soda or, yeah, or some chips. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> so it's tough if you don't have an easy way for them to get there. So mm -hmm. we're really looking for solutions. Yeah, creating that space. Uh, having furniture on wheels was a, a really big uh, solution that we found. And you, you might think that that's a little like uh, weird to have furniture on wheels, like it might be a little too hospital -y or something. But we found a really nice set on Amazon uh, that kind of incorporates our love of rustic and modern concepts that were still on wheels that made it easier for us to clean up before a session and clean up afterwards, too. And, and a big thing for us, too, with the help of one of our players, we received a, a larger table that has the leafs in it. And it's oh, kind yeah. of an older style of table, but it allows you to both, without really doing much movement, stretch the table out, add some more space, put it down when you're not, and really be able to be a lot more adjustable without having to move your giant kitchen table throughout your house. Yeah, I think we can we can adjust it from like a, a six-foot table, no, even smaller, like a four-foot table to an almost 10-foot table. Yeah, and that, crazy. and that allows us to have six people all sitting on either sides looking across from each other and still give space for me as the DM to move around them. Yep, and they're all comfortable. They have their own space. They don't have to feel like they're encroaching on somebody else either. Oh, yeah. Because you don't want to do that. And then one of the big things we started with this new one was creating our little, uh, what we like to call our drink station. Yeah. And our little kind of area where we try to provide just about anything you can think of for a D&D &D session. Oh, yeah. It's so much fun when you can just get up and get yourself a, a cup of coffee, some tea, or maybe a little hot cocoa with some marshmallows in there. Add a little cinnamon for, for a little extra if you're feeling a little cold that day. And you don't have to feel like you, you have to disrupt the entire table to do it because the drink station also has wheels. So we can move it around to be more accessible to our players. And like, and obviously, you know, we, we made this station and we kind of made it all look like a mini Starbucks and all that kind of fun stuff. But it can be something as simple as just a cooler 
You can yeah. just take an ice cooler with your drinks from the station and move it away from the table. So mm -hmm. that way when your players go and gather things, you're not hearing ice and, and noise. So you're not being taken out of the moment while well, you still need to go get something because you're particularly parched. Yes, and that, and that plays a huge role in keeping that immersion part of the table that we want just because now that we have more space, we can create those immersions. We don't want to take people out of it when, when they're right next to the coffee maker. Or they're, they're hearing that go on. Oh, yeah. And for you other apartments, uh, D and Ders out there, you know, be aware with also your carpet style, your floor tiles, stuff like that. Um, you never know what eight hours of sitting in a chair can do to uh, fake floors. Um, so always be aware, you know, sometimes you have to put extra ever, extra mats down because you never think about, oh, well, we're going to be sitting at a table for maybe eight hours, so that could potentially do some damage. Yeah, people so, like to move around. So that's where the wheels and why we stress wheels so hard because it's those nice. protect your surfaces. Mm. One of the biggest things about apartment D&Ding is getting that deposit back at the end of your yes, real quest. Yes, yes, yes. We have, we're lucky, we have self-healing lin linoleum floors, but we've still had issues where, where you know, over the course of an eight, eight hour period where people are paying more attention to the to the adventure than they are to themselves at that point, it does it does create some damage. And so we, we want to stress that wheels help mitigate a lot of that. Oh, yeah. And, and really what the biggest thing is, is streamlining. Because, mm -hmm. you know, for us, we run a semi-constant uh, game. We do it every three weeks. And in that, though, uh, my wife and I, we're fairly busy. We, yes. we work both our own jobs. Mm -hmm. We're trying to start this podcast. Yeah. So we knew that when we did do something, it had to be very much breakdownable very quickly mm -hmm. and re and be able to be reset up with ease. Absolutely. Uh, so streamlining that process is something that everyone should really focus on. Because if you include and incorporate your D&D &D lifestyle into your home's aesthetic, it makes it real simple. Uh, and we created this nice little kind of nook, which is our kind of campaign nook yeah we well we we have cabinetry uh, on wheels of course we have shelving that all hold our what are our tools for the current campaign that we're in so we do have some in our bonus room that are from either earlier campaigns or maybe later possible things that might happen but we have a central cabinet where we have all of the uh, player binders where all their information is uh, where their you know their miniatures are stored any any important miniatures or set pieces can be stored in the cabinetry underneath and we also keep all our books there which is really nice yeah, and, and then we have kind of our little set piece as we have this nice painting that was painted by my wife uh, <laughs> that includes kind of the time lapse of all the campaigns that we've done and all the one shots and all the players and the characters they've had. And they've each signed on there both their name and their character's name. So now we have the goal of filling up this portrait of all the experiences we had as this kind of visual representation of that. Yeah, and it's nice. It, it also doubles as a piece of artwork for the house. So when people come over, it's a conversation piece like, oh, what's that? Why are there people's names on there? Yeah, who said D&D &D couldn't be classy? I know. And by doing that, and, and if you're wondering, please check out our Discord. We are going to include a photo of this wall so you can see. Obviously, with podcasts, we only have the power of our words. Yes. <laughs> um, but we assure you, we even have little, you know, torch lights on it to really give that effect so that not only is it kind of an exhibit to our passion, but it becomes an RP space. The players walk up, they grab their mugs from the, from the cabinetry, and they sit down at their location and enter into a world of extraeus. Yeah, and I know that a, a lot of the misconception around us nerdy people, especially people who play Dungeons and Dragons, is that we can't really make a classy nerdy space. It will just be nerdy. Uh, but we, I think we figured out a really nice way to incorporate Dungeons and Dragons into our decor, it, where it looks like art pieces. It looks like important things that, you know, that we planned to be there. Oh, yeah, right. Because it is a part of our life. Uh, you know, I, I believe that nowadays you, you really don't have to hide these things mm -mm. from the world. And why would you? Yeah. And so we very much love that every session, even if there's not other players at the table, just being in our apartment, we feel like we're still kind of in that tavern in Extraeus. We're still out exploring somewhere. Yeah, it keeps that vibe going. It's really nice. Uh, but what, what makes it so much easier for us to keep that sort of space for us, that home space, is making sure that our setup does not interfere with that home space. Oh, yeah. So ensuring that our table setup is efficient, that it's fast, and that it doesn't disrupt that is really important. Yeah, it's kind of hard if you're trying to, you know, eat breakfast in the morning and there's this whole, like, mini map set up on the table from, a, you know, a few days ago that's still kind of in the way and... 
uh, yeah, it's just, it's hard to start balancing that life in your apartment because mm -hmm. you live here, as well as this is also your fantasy world that kind of a lot of people come and use and experience and enjoy. Yeah, so it's it's tough to, to balance uh, how it should be in your life as well as not completely take over. And the way we found is simply, you know, the night before a session, we, we have it now with the wheels and all these little setups that it takes us, what, five, ten minutes to get the entirety of our table set up and, and created? Yeah, it's quite nice. We can actually have breakfast in the morning, sit down, have a cup of coffee, not worry so much. <laughs> Which is rare for if you're hosting D&D, &D, I yeah, know. Yeah, it's a scramble sometimes. Right, and, and that's really the, the, the great thing about how we've made ourselves so organized. And for all of you, stay tuned on YouTube. We're going to have a little compile that shows how we set up our table, going from our lowly apartment kitchen table to the advanced uh, DM setup of the Extraeus campaign. Oh, uh, so yeah. stay tuned for that when that comes out. Mm -hmm, that'll be super fun and then we also uh, we have other ways of organizing especially the information there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of information that comes out of dnd no joke <laughs> so i feel like a kinko sometimes with how much information i print yep. out <laughs> so it is really important for us to have binders for our players to hold that information uh, their notes uh, anything that they might get any handouts we might get i know we get a lot of quest markers and i things do like, like my that. i like my handouts mm -hmm. i like the more tactile response to having these things yep yep so we always keep a binder here at the house so that or at the, at the house at the apartment so the so that the players have a readily available source of information that they don't feel could get lost anywhere yeah and that's because the major rule is they're not allowed to take these binders mm -hmm. from the apartment so that way no matter what happens uh your players are ready so they just have to show up you have drinks ready for them mm -hmm. snacks and all they have to do is show up sit down and just get lost in the story and I find that that helps my players enjoy the story more. They're not having to run to the gas station before the session to grab a soda so they can make it. They're not having to go, oh, no, I forgot my player sheet. What did I have last session? None of that happens. Yeah. The only thing you do is you come and have fun. And as a DM, I feel like that's the best thing you can do. And it's not just prepping for your session itself, but prepping your apartment, your home, your school, your favorite gaming shop, mm -hmm. anywhere, setting up the mood for it. And there's a lot of little things that you can do to change the mood oh yeah the, there's a lot of little different touches that you can add uh that's why we have a dedicated cabinet for storing all those materials so that if there is a specific theme we're trying to go for we have access to those materials without having to disrupt our daily life in our, in our apartment we also you know we have pretty big shelves here in our bonus room, which we're very lucky to have. Uh, they're about seven feet high. They weren't that expensive. They were also bought on Amazon. Uh, and that sometimes some of them have a little bit of closed cabinetry. So we can make sure that we have plenty of storage for those items without creating a lot of clutter. Yeah, and, and not only storing just your minis and everything like that, but little other pieces that you can put on. Uh, little, uh, we have battery rapid candles. I have hopes of one day having a fog machine. <laughs> that would be but cool. But little things. And another big one that we do is, and you know, this is a shout out to the Govi brand lights, is they are amazing LED lights that you can fully yeah. customize and control. And that lighting does play a lot of effect onto the story. And mm -hmm. so... We are still working on the kind of bugs and, and, and ticks to get this working, but <laughs> yeah. we hope uh, to show also kind of the way of using colors and different atmospheres to also engage our players in this world. Yeah. And by having little trinkets on the table itself, candles, fake books, skulls, mm -hmm. it really kind of creates this emphasis of that, oh, you're here to RP. You're here to experience Yeah, something. and you don't have to spend a lot on it either. We've, we've gotten the things, like you said, like little spell books or tomes or stuff like that we've gotten those at the 99 cent store at the dollar general i i ran a one shot where we it was a carnival theme so i went to the dollar general and got a bunch of carnival themed snacks and prizes it was fairly inexpensive and everyone was super happy to have something physical to either eat or take home with them that they could have as a prize yeah i mean and that's and that's half the thing is mm -hmm. is you know we we love the theater of the mind but we love the theater of what we can actually hold on to and, and be a part of that 
Uh, and so that's really why we focus so much on setting up the perfect gaming space. Uh, think, you know, it, it's also a big thing about sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have multiple Bluetooth speakers throughout the area so that I can project noise in various different sections of the apartment. Uh, so that way it sounds like they're both inside of the shopkeep's room, mm -hmm. but they can hear the mumbling of the outside traffic, you know, curiously behind the table instead of in front of them. Yeah, it's fun when you can hear the tavern around you as opposed to just from the speaker in front of you. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. way, you know, and it's simply just connecting a couple of uh, Bluetooth speakers. I have one connected to my computer, one connected to my phone, mm -hmm. and that allows me these kind of multi-channel way. Very inexpensive, too. It's not like I have to buy one of those giant sound systems with mm -hmm. multiple sounds. It's just my phone and my laptop. Yeah, and you don't have to pay for crazy programs either for that music. You can go to YouTube. There's so many D&D uh, playlists and different instrumentals that they have on there that you can just play in the background. Oh, completely yeah. free of charge. Yeah, and I'll, I'll combine multiple audios to create kind of this composite that mm -hmm. kind of fills more in. So instead of being worried that, oh, everyone listens to this, well, does everyone listen to this combined with this combined with this? No. So you can always find some way to be a little unique, even yeah. when getting something that everyone else uses. Mm -hmm, to add a little flavor. And so by allowing all of these different changes to the way that you set up your table, you can really create a perfect gaming space for yourself and your players, even if you're in a small apartment, a small space. Yeah, and that's the biggest thing we want to stress. It doesn't really matter the size of the space that you truly have. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you and your spouse playing together just on the coffee table or you're in a giant gyna uh, gymnasium with tables as mm -hmm. part of a group. No matter what, you can create any space you want because it, that's what D&D is about. Like we said, simple candles, a little bit of sound, maybe some dry ice in a cup. <laughs> yeah, we've you done that. You create this crazy scene that your players mm -hmm. will always love for you. Oh, yeah. The, and the, they, at least for our players, I, I can't speak for anyone else, but they've, they've been super happy with all the terrain. And, and even if it is just something that is like a cardboard box or anything like that, it really helps bring people in. And so we want to make sure that everything that we do brings our players further into that, into that game. And, and the apartment, making sure the apartment is set up for that is yeah, important. Yeah, you know, like we always share is comfortability is a big thing. So, you know, just because you might have the fancy table or this, but if you're not comfortable it makes the game so much harder like an example of this is we when we first moved into our newer larger apartment uh we didn't know we had air conditioning uh, yeah. And one time when it was very, very, very hot during a session, it worked out because we were currently in D&D's Advern Avernus. True. So it kind of worked out as an it RP. Helped. It wasn't a planned, <laughs> but it was just so uncomfortable. No one could really get into the space. It was, we all loved it. We had been campaigning for years, but because it was so uncomfortable... You really couldn't enjoy the game. Yeah, it created a weird like fugue state for us where we were paying attention and we were there, but we were also kind of not because we were just so focused on how hot we were. So it just shows just how important the streamlining and the setting up of your table at home can be. Mm -hmm. Just by creating a very comfortable atmosphere, whether it's just sitting on the couch or at a table, just focus on being comfortable. Yeah, and it's not just comfortable for your players too, but comfortable for yourself. You you don't want to stress yourself out when running a D&D &D game because that just makes it not fun for you and not fun for the people around you. But thank you so much for joining us for this Couple of Nerds journey. And we will be talking a little bit more in our apartment craft segment, uh, especially next time. We'll be talking oh, yeah. about food. Yeah, we're going to talk about kind of the little bit of the science behind eating at a table with friends and that community and that family uh, kind of bond you can create. And looking a little bit more in depth as to ways that you can help yourself and your other players create a better bond. Yeah, how to bring everyone together. And so we encourage you listeners to share your own apartment craft tips. Let us know how you make your tabletop more streamlined. Oh yeah, please send us mm -hmm. a picture of your of your tabletops. Put it out there. Come to our Discord, put it in there, find our article of, of apartment craft and submit your photos. If you're, if we, we are hoping future that we'll be able to show off other people's set up, uh, setups and kind of see how other people are finding the best way to play D&D &D at home. Yeah, we'd like to see what your experiences are and share them with others. You, you never know. We, we share a lot in common sometimes, even though we don't realize it. So it'll be really nice to pass that on. Oh, yeah. And just like we said, remember, it's just about coming together and having fun. 
Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. Just know that everyone is coming together to have fun with you. And it doesn't matter really where you're doing that. It's a matter of who you're doing it with. Mm-hmm. Have a great night and may your adventures be legendary. Thank you all for joining us on this adventure in the realms of couple of nerds. If you've enjoyed the journey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave us a review. Your support means the world to us. Absolutely. And if you have any burning questions, want advice, or just want to share your own nerdy tales, feel free to reach out in the comments or at dndwifestories.com. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for our next episode. In our apartment craft segment, we will explore options for table and apartment setups that will help you breeze through it. Until then, may your dice be kind, your campaigns epic, and your adventures legendary. Stay nerdy, adventurers.